Sorry, mate. I'm just live on Facebook. <laughs> hey, everybody. It's Suck City here, and I'm live on Facebook, I hope. Any idea? I'm having notifications. Hmm. Me and technology. So, let's see if this works. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Sorry, everybody. You just have to bear with me. I am live. Amazing. So, I'm trying some new fancy software. No, I'm not. It's software that I've been using for a long time, but I just struggle with technology in general. So, in this training, what I'm going to talk to you about is making more sales in a way that you feel great about. So, um, I am testing this new, no, not new, this software. I've been using it for a little while, but this is the first time I've used it to go live publicly. Um, I just thought rather than the ad hoc lives that I've been doing for the past week where I've been going live from all kinds of different places, including the bathroom, uh, I'd deliver something of real value to you guys. So that's not to say the last lives haven't been of value, but this one is planned. I have slides and everything. So uh, if you guys could just do me a favor and let me know that you can see my screen and let me know that you can hear what I'm saying, uh, I'm doing the hand actions just to make sure that you know what I'm, I'm talking about. But, uh, let me know that it's all coming through okay. I'm going to dive straight into this. Complete training on Facebook, no opt-in required, about making more sales in your online fitness business. So, let's do it. Any idea from still live? No, no idea. Okay, so... This is a quote that I got from my mentor, Frank Kern. If you want to impress people, make things complicated. If you want to help people, keep things simple. Throughout this training, I'm going to share with you some really simple uh, advice. That doesn't mean it's not effective, though. Um, simple works. I'm not here to impress you. I have no intention of that. I don't care about impressing you. Yeah, I don't. Um, I just want to make sure that you get help from this, get some results, and who knows, you may work with me in the future. What a way to run a business, right? Actually helping people to get people through the door. I know, amazing. So in this training, I'm going to talk to you guys about why a clearly defined sales process is so important and what yours should look like, uh, yeah. how marketing and selling is now blended. I'm going to explain that in a lot, lot of detail. Uh, things have changed, right? We're not just getting people on the phone and trying to sell, sell, sell to them. Most of the heavy lifting should be done by the time you have a sales conversation with somebody so that that sales conversation is just a chat. Right. Is that online? So we're going to go through that. We're going to talk about how to overcome objections by okay. never getting any. My good friend, Ollie Bell, always says to me that a good salesperson never gets objections because they've already dealt with them. They've preempted them. They understand who their audience is and they've either yes. got those objections covered at, you know, in the beginning of the conversation uh, by asking some very key questions that I'll talk to you about mm -hmm. shortly, or they cover it in their marketing, which is what we do uh, very often, right? So a lot of the objections that people have about working with us. Okay. Handling inquiries, very quickly, I'm just going to talk to you about handling inquiries, just because I know that so many personal trainers get into these conversations via DM, for example, on Instagram or Facebook, that just lead to coaching people for free and don't actually get the person who's asking for help, help because they never do anything with it, and they don't get you a client. You just coach somebody for free, and then they maybe ask for the price, and then ghost you. Or you ask them to jump on a call to sell to them, and they ghost you. So we're going to talk about how to avoid that and handle inquiries so that those people turn into clients. And I'm going to walk you through a simple sales flow that we use, or I'm going to walk you through... Uh, the overview of it, I'm not going to go into the minutiae or any of the secret little tricks, we don't use secret tricks, or any of the um, tiny bits that we don't have time for today, but I will give you the, the bird's eye view of it. So it's really freaking me out because I can't see you guys, so I'm not being rude, I'm just getting my phone up uh, to see if anybody's here. I am here, I'm live, amazing. And people are here, cool. So... As some of you already know, I'm going live every single day. That's my plan. That's my New Year's resolution. Go live every single day. And the reason is because Facebook will reward me for keeping people on their platform by showing my stuff to more people. 
but they'll only do that if you guys engage. So please do ask questions, please do leave any comments, please do give me likes, love hearts, angry faces, or share this if you think it, it's going to be value to, valuable to other people. Um, please do engage with it. If I don't get to your question while I'm live, I will get to it afterwards and just follow up with all of them. So a quick disclaimer, any results that I show you uh, in this training, I'm not claiming that you're going to do the same. If I talk to you about any of my students, obviously I've worked with them, they've had a chance to go through our education, ask us questions, get our support, our coaching, our mentoring. Everything that I give you is to help you do the same, but I don't know your individual circumstances. So without knowing you, without knowing that you're going to do the work, without being able to support you, I'm not going to make any bold claims that you're going to go and do the same thing, right? Um, so these are just two of the students that I plucked um, five minutes before I went live. Uh, two of the screenshots from this year. What are we on? The 7th? Yeah, Monday the 7th. So Jack on the left, 10 new one-to-one online coaching clients. Danny on the left, on the right, six, six consultations this week. That was actually last week. Six new clients signed up right? Um, using our sales flow, lose, using the exact same process uh, and principles that I'm going to walk you through today. So if you would like to be closing 100% of the people that you speak with, stick around. And I'm going to show you how to do exactly that. So the OFB high converting non-sleazy way of selling stuff. So the first thing that you need to understand is that marketing and selling is now blended right it's not two separate things so in fact let me get rid of that the first thing that i'm going to give you a history lesson first of all because who doesn't love sticking around on a facebook live for a history lesson a few years ago marketing and selling were very separate when it came to digital marketing marketing had the purpose of getting people on the phone or getting people to opt in right your social media work was hey here's a bit of content get on the phone with me and then the phone the phone call had to be hard selling because people hadn't had the opportunity to receive value from you or consume a lot of your content yet. Now things are changing. You need to be planting the seed in your content, be selling in your content so that when it gets to a phone call, that process is a little bit longer beforehand, but when they get on the call, people are already ready to buy, right? So a few years ago, you had to maybe be a bit more pushy on the phone. And that's why a lot of people get anxiety around selling. It's why I used to get anxiety around selling stuff on the phone because I didn't like that. I didn't want to be like that. But now you can do a lot of the heavy lifting with your content and your marketing so that when you chat to somebody on the phone, it's just, hey, how can I help? What are you struggling with? Where do you want to get to? Cool. This is what I do. Let's do it. And that's how the sales flow should go. I will walk you through exactly how it should go in just a minute. So you should be addressing what used to be addressed only at the point of sale in your marketing. So it used to be a case of you'd get on the phone to people, you'd have to dig into pain points, um, find out their benefits and aspirations. You still have to do that a little bit. You'd have to cover your service in depth. You'd have to cover any and overcome common objections all the time on the phone. You don't have to do that anymore. You should be overcoming and addressing those points um, in your content, right? So within your content, talk about pain points. Within your content, talk about the benefits of working with you. Talk about the aspirations that you know your audience has. Talk about your service as well, right? A bit of product placement. Show people behind the curtain. Show people what you do because people don't get it, right? People don't understand online coaching yet. They don't understand online training. They don't understand nutrition coaching or how working with a nutritionist works. So make sure that you're showing people how it works in your content and telling people, explaining. You can do that as story works really well talk about the stuff that you're doing with clients how you work with them things that they've done and how it worked and what you're going to do next and that okay. paints a picture of your service as well uh, addressing common objections we're going to cover in a bit more detail um in just a second yeah definitely and anything else that you find comes up during sales conversations with people put it into your marketing consistently so the best thing that you could possibly do for your marketing is speak to more people the more calls you do with people, the more consultations, the more conversations you have, the more you'll understand, okay, I need to be covering this stuff regularly in my marketing. If somebody's coming to you regularly and saying, I don't think online training is for me because uh, I think I need to work with somebody in person, 
then get covering that stuff in your content. Right, okay. Start overcoming that in your content, explaining why is a online is a better option or an alternative option or why it's right for anybody, right? They don't have to see some come and see you in person, right? Listen to what people are telling you. Listen to the reason people aren't buying from you. Listen to the people, listen to the reasons why somebody right, would okay. work with you. What, what do they want to know, right? Make sure you start covering that in their marketing so that when it gets to the point of sale, whether that's a call, sales page, application page, whatever, uh, people are ready, all right? Let your marketing and your social media work, because all of you do great work on social media, you just need to make sure that you're covering this stuff, and it'll make the sale more likely and, and much easier and a much nicer experience for you and the lead or the prospect or your new amazing client. So, very quickly, let's talk about how to handle inquiries, uh, because I know a lot of people that we speak to or start working with get inquiries, so some people will reach out to them, but then they'll get stuck in this never-ending conversation where they're just coaching this person for free on Facebook or on Instagram, uh, and then when they eventually try and sell, it's, it's just gone and then they get ghosted, right? So if somebody gets, if you get an inquiry from a Spur-style email or organic uh so by, from someone telling you that they want to buy. Okay, so Sorry, if you get an inquiry from an email, they reply to an email, or they reach out to you via DM, that's somebody telling you that they want to buy from you. So if they don't, that's your fault, right? It's just on you. As that point says right there. So here's what to do. If you create a piece of content, if you post on Instagram, right? Let's say you tell a story about a client that you're working with and you talk about how before they started working with you um, they were having issues dieting Monday to, Monday to Friday was great but then Friday night to Sunday night they would eat loads of shit and then feel like they were starting again on Monday right let's say you wrote a post about that but then how you've worked together and you've overcome that and you've improved the situation so now so they're just always on it right let's say you create a piece of content around that and you get a message from somebody saying Hey, that's exactly where I'm out. Where I'm at, I'm, you know, I'm I'm good Monday to Friday. But then I go out on a Friday night. I drink and eat loads, and I feel sorry for myself on Saturday. Do the same, and then on the Sunday, I think, oh, I'm on no point starting on Sunday, so I'll start on Monday. Uh, any advice? Let's say they message you that. Rather than get into a back and forth conversation of coaching them for free, basically acknowledge what they've said and then say the following. So I acknowledge what they've said and say, don't worry about it. Uh, it's a situation that a lot of people find themselves in. They want to enjoy life, and don't get me wrong, you 100% should. And it's just about um, a bit of education and support and accountability around how to do that whilst still working towards your goals. The easy, and then you move into this thing, this paragraph that I'm going to tell you now. The easiest thing to do is jump on a quick call uh, to see if I can actually help. Uh, have you got 15 minutes tomorrow? And I'll see if I can. Uh, if I can't, I'll be completely honest, but I'll definitely be able to at least point you in the direction of someone who can. And this is why that's really powerful. One, you've offered to help, right? You've, you've said, do you want a quick chat to see if I can help? Um, and you've also said, if I can't, don't worry, I'll point you in the direction of someone who can. So even if they don't want to jump on the phone, they don't feel pressured. They don't, haven't got their guard up. They feel like you've tried to help and it's on them. So what that means is in the future, you can follow up with them. Hey, how are you getting on with... Uh, that weekend situation that you messaged me about last month, right? So you can always follow up. But the reality is they'll probably reply saying, yeah, I've got 15 minutes tomorrow. What time can you chat? Or I'm free after 5 p.m. And then you move into the sales flow that I'm going to talk to you about in just a minute. So instead of getting into this never-ending conversation of coaching people for free on the internet, get straight to the point, right? They've reached out to you because they want help, Um so offer it to them. Offer to help them in the best way that you can help them, and that's by signing them up as a client, right? Um, the reality is some people will still ghost you, but like I said, it's okay because you've not been pushy, you offered them help, and you've not had a lot of your time taken by someone who is just nowhere near ready by coaching them for free, um, even though deep down you know you, they're never gonna do anything with that advice, right? So that's how you handle inquiries. Straight to the point without making them feel they've been pushed. You've offered help. So even if they ghost you or say, na say no, my spelling in these slides is amazing. It still leaves the door open to follow up and you haven't wasted time effectively coaching somebody for free via Messenger or via DM on Insta, wherever it is. 
Um, does that make sense? Just let me know in the comments, guys. I can't see it on my screen right now. Let me get my phone back up uh, and make sure I'm still actually live because technology life. I am still live, I think. Okay, so that's handling inquiries, making sure that you don't drain yourself or give up so much of your time, your valuable time, coaching people for free. You offer help. Um, if you get ghosted, it's done quickly and it's done leaving the door open for further follow-up. So the next thing that I want to talk to you about is overcoming objections in your content, right? Or at the beginning of calls, for example, if you know they're always going to come up. So the easiest way to overcome obje objections is to get it once and then change your process so that you address it. So if you commonly get the objection um, that, oh, I've got some examples. If you get the price objection regularly, um, ask in your pre-call form what they're willing to invest in order to get the results they want, right? And if they say, um, and what, we, what you should probably do is have a couple of options. Let's say it's £100 a month, £200 a month, £300 a month, £400 a month. Right? Maybe you charge £200 a month for online coaching. Um, any of those answers means they're probably willing to invest what you charge, even if they put £100 a month. Um, so the first thing that you can do is ask in your pre-call form what they're willing to invest in order to get the results that they want. Um, within your content, make it very clear how much of an impact you can have on the lives of the people that you work with. That's the easiest way to get your value across and overcome the pricing objection. Show how much of an effect your work has on people. Yes, talk about the negative consequences of people not changing their situation as well. Find out why it's so important to them and why they feel they need to address this right now instead of waiting any longer. When we talk about the sales flow, we'll, I'll talk you through how to get people to give you answers to your questions in a way that they're going to realize that this is what they need, right? Not necessarily regardless of price, but um, at the prices most of you are charging, it's, it's something that they should invest in. If this is an objection that's coming up reg regularly for you, you need to ask a spouse, or uh, for us, for example, we occasionally get people who want to speak with their business partner first. They need to speak with a business partner or it's, it's a joint decision. So once you've booked the call, that's the first thing that you need to get done first. Let's say you, you're doing it by DM, you book the call in, great. Ask them if their partner or anyone else needs to help them with this decision. And if so, ask them to join in on the call too. Right? So we do all this all the time. We'll ask people if there are any more uh, decision makers. And if there are, we'll say, cool, get them to join us on the second call. Uh, what happens is a lot of people get their back up and like, no, nobody else needs to give me permission. Um, which is great for us as well. It gets them in the frame of mind where they feel in control of whether they can make this decision or not. And what it also does is, if they say, no, I don't need permission from anybody else, they're not all of a sudden going to come up with that at the end because they'll feel stupid, right? Because they've lied to you, effectively. <clears throat> so, a few ways you can do this. If you're arranging a call via DM, it's really easy to ask. If somebody is booking forms and that's how people come through to you, have a reminder sequence that you send to people between people booking a call and people actually doing the call that addresses these objections. So you can send a quick video that says, hey, thanks for booking a call. Uh, I really appreciate it. Can't wait to, to talk to you to see if I can help. Uh, and just to reiterate, I'll be completely honest if I can't help you, but I definitely will be able to at least point you in the direction of somebody who can. Um, if you need to rearrange, please do let me know. Uh, I'm really busy um, and as a small business owner, every few, I, I've got things to do every few minutes, right? So if you need to rearrange, please let me know. Please don't just um, not turn up for our call because um, as you can imagine, it's super frustrating, which obviously the same it is going to get people to show up more. Um, and then the other thing that you're going to say on the, after that is if there's anybody else that um, needs to help you in your decision making when it comes to investing in uh, your health, your training, your nutrition, and the things that we're going to work on, then please do uh, feel free to ask them to join us on our call as well um, so that they can hear about uh, what you want help with and why it's important to you and how I would help you with that or, or the direction that I would point you in. 
So in that quick video that you can send people in between them booking a call and doing the call, you overcome the spouse objection, you make sure you know you guilt trip them into showing up for the call. Um, you get them excited because you know you're grateful they've booked in, etc. Um, in the form, you've asked them if what they're willing to invest. So we're overcoming all these objections within our sales process. This is another one. Sounds great. I'll start in the new year. Uh, and this one is really easy to overcome by making sure that they say out loud why this is important to them and uh, why this is something that they need to start right away. Um, and so we can do that on the call, and I'll talk to you about that in a minute when we go for the sales flow. But this is also something that you can add into an application form. Um, so if people fill in a form before they work with you, just say, uh, is this something that you're looking to um, get started right away? Simple as that. Yes, no. If they click yes, they're not going to come up with that objection on the call, right? Easy. This is just an example of overcoming objections so that you're not on the phone trying to force people, right? What if you get an objection on the on the phone, it's so hard to overcome because people will feel like you're selling to them They'll, and they don't like that. People don't like being sold to. Um, they feel like they're being pushed. So don't get into that situation. I hate that situation. I would never, I just never do it. I never, I don't try to overcome objections on the phone. I'm terrible at it. Um, I'd rather just address these issues in my marketing. I'd rather address them in the sales process, in the form, in the reminders that I'm going to send out in between the booking of the call and the call, um, so that when we get on the phone, we can just have a nice chat. So that's how you overcome objections. And, and the, what you need to do for this is just to be paying attention, right? If things are coming up regularly, think of ways that you can put things into your process so they stop coming up, right? If the price objection is coming up regularly on the phone, Make sure you have something on your form. Make sure that, like, take a long, hard look at your content. Do you, does it look like what you do is serious? Does it look like what you do provides value? Um, does it look cheap? If so, change that stuff in your marketing. Um, so we need to overcome these objections way before we get to the point of the call and they come then, because then it's really hard to overcome. Does that make sense? What are the most common objections you get? Let me know. Um, even if you're watching the recorded version of this, by the way, I'm not just jumping on my phone. Um, oh, Daniel Grimes, thanks for that comment, buddy. I'm going to reply to that live. Love heart. Um, so yeah, let me know what common objections you, get, you guys get. Even if it's in the recording, I will check out for... For comments that come in, I'll be sure to answer any questions. Um, so if you need anything, do let me know. So the call, the scary call. I used to hate sales calls so much that even when people booked them in with me, I would ghost them. So you know how a lot of people have issues of people not showing up on calls? I'd be the one that wouldn't show up. So we first thought, I first started doing sales calls within the fitness industry uh, for the gyms, right? So I used to have a couple of gyms. Um, and when we introduced sales calls, I was like, yeah, that's fine, I'll do them. And then when it actually came around to it, I got my phone, turned it on silent, turned it the other way and just pretended like I didn't have to do it. Even though I was supposed to be calling that. I hate it, I, I hated it, I got horrible anxiety. And that's because back then, the sales process was a Facebook ad that literally said, hey, book a call. And then I'd do the call. So there was no, no warm up process, there was no marketing to overcome all the objections. And it just gave me horrible anxiety, it made my stomach turn, I didn't like it, didn't want to do it. But then when we added all the stuff that I've just spoke to you about, and then started using the sales flow that I'm going to talk to you about now, I felt fine. Uh, and not only did I feel fine, but I was selling stuff every single day. Stephen, who sat over there, Hello. used to get really annoyed because I would text him every single time I sold something, which was every day. Like, I made another sale, I'm so excited. Um, and you should get excited about selling your stuff, right? It's cool. Um, and that's the, the shift that I had from being scared of even looking at my phone at the times I was supposed to call people to making a sale every single day, doing what I've just talked to you about and then this sales flow. So I'm going to just walk you through this step by step really quickly. Um, so someone's booked in a call with you. After this, by the way, I'm going to give you a complete sales process um, of what it should look like from inquiry in to reminder sequence to calls booked to doing the call, to taking the payment, and then what next. 
So the sales flow really quickly is really, really powerful. This is why you know I showed you at the beginning the, the screenshot of Danny who uses the sales flow had closed six, had got six new clients from six consultations. And it's because of this. Um, so first step, hello, be human. Um, if you share any commonalities with them, talk about it. So ask them how their day, how their morning is, for example, how their weekend was, what they've been up to, how they're feeling, if they're at work. I empathize, empathize with that, empathize, 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 I can't speak, empathize with that, if they say, yeah, I've just been out with my dog and you've got a dog, oh yeah, cool, what dog have you got, just have a chat, right, be a normal person, no, you don't necessarily need to be a normal person, I know a lot of you are weird, um, I'm weird as well, um, so if you have commonalities, chat, right, just hello, be human, be nice, have a quick chat, and then immediately you need to set the frame. And this is where you take control of the call. Again, you guys may have found yourself in situations where the person that you're speaking to in a consultation or a call just takes you off on this tangent and you're sitting there thinking, I've completely lost this. We don't want this to happen. So we set the frame by saying, okay, cool. This is what's going to happen. This is called tell them. So you're going to tell them what's going to happen, right? Uh, I'm just going to ask you a few questions. It's going to feel a little bit like a, a friendly interrogation. Um, but don't worry, it's just the easiest way for me to find out um, everything that I need to know about you, where you're at, where you want to get to, uh, to see if I can help. Does that sound okay? And then they'll say yes, which is amazing because you just got your first yes, right? So we've been human, had a quick chat. You've set the frame by saying that little sentence, tell, tell them, just remember that, tell them, tell them what's going to happen. And then we're going to go into our set of questions. So the first question, uh, okay, cool. So really quickly, first question. Why did you decide it was time to jump on this call? What's not working? And then an, an amazing thing is going to happen. They're going to tell you all the reasons that they need your help. All the things that they're struggling with. Um, I've just put underneath that dig. So just ask for more. If you need more from them, um, ask them to tell you more. Expand on answers that they give you. Um, and that's it, right? The amazing thing about all these questions is they're going to tell you why they need your help. You're not going to do any selling. You're just going to ask these questions. So the first one, why did you decide it was time to jump on this call? What's not working? And then just get them to expand, right? And then once you've got as much as you want to get, repeat it. Okay, cool. So um, this is what you've told me. This, 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 and this. Does that sound all right? Yes. We get another yes. Amazing. Then, okay, cool. So the easiest way to do this is, uh, or the next thing I'd like to do is, let's say we work together uh, in six months' time, in an ideal world, what would have had to have happened for you to be ecstatic with the results? In a dream situation, what do you want uh, if we were to work together, right? And what this gets them to do is look, it's called future pacing. They look ahead, and here they will tell you all the amazing things that they want from working with you. So again, they're going to tell you all the reasons why they want to work with you. It gets them excited. Um, you can expand on it again, ask them to expand. So if they just say, oh, I'd love to have just uh, lost weight. Okay, cool. Is there any reason behind wanting to lose weight? Where are you at right now? Uh, oh, this is where I'm at right now. This is where I want to get. Okay, cool. Is there any reason why that's where you want to get to? Have you been that way in the past? Have you put weight back on? Where are you at? Uh, no, but I've got a holiday coming up. Okay, cool. Why is it important for you to lose weight for this holiday? Who are you going away with? Oh, I'm going away with these people and they're all absolutely shredded and, uh, and I'm not, blah, blah, blah. Just expand on it, right? So again, they've told you all the, sh all the reasons why they need your help. They've told you all the reasons why they want to work with you to get to achieve this amazing thing. And this, not only is this great for your ability to, to close them as a client, but it's also great for actually working with them as a client. They've, they've told you what's not working. They've told you where they want to get to. So when they become a client, you've got a great understanding of how to work with them. So again, we dig, we get them to expand, we get them to tell us more, and then we repeat it back as well. Okay, cool. So this is where we want to be. Does that make sense? Is that right? Is there anything you want to add? No, that's all right. Uh, sorry. Is that right? Yes. Cool. We get to say yes. And the third and final question. Okay, cool. So we've got a good idea of where you're, where you're at and what you're struggling with. We've got a good idea of where you want to get to. If this was so important, surely you would have bridged that gap. Why? Why do you feel you need help to bridge that gap? What do you struggle with the most? Why can't you do this yourself? And then they're going to tell you all the reasons that they can't do the sum on their own why they can't bridge the gap from where they're at to what they've just told you is their ideal outcome. So all we've, we've done is we've asked three questions. Where you are, where do you want to get to, why can't you bridge the gap between those two places? And all they've done is tell you why they need your help, 
where they want your help getting to, uh, and why they can't do it on their own. So they're telling you why they want the help, why they need your help, why they need your help, why they need your help. Again, same thing, get them to expand on any uh, answers that they give you, uh, get as much as inf information as you can. Again, this is not only great for this sales flow, but it's also great for working with them as a client, because they'll tell you all the things that they believe they need help with, or the they may tell you all of the things that they struggle with, and that's just great for getting them better results when they become a client. And they quit so well. once they've told you everything, make sure that you express confidence in your ability to help if you think you can. So for example, oh my God, it sounds amazing. Honestly, um, I have absolute complete confidence in uh, getting getting you to X and then repeat what they've told you where to get to. Um, the stuff that you've told me is stuff that we're working with, working on with clients all the time. Um, I'm not saying you're the same as everybody else, you're a special person, but um, in terms of the problems that you're facing, we can definitely help. And then the reality is some stuff will come up again as we work together, as we get get results, um, and, and that's when we'll start uh, really dialing into making this work for you, uh, making it individual to you, suit you, your lifestyle, uh, and making sure that you get amazing results week in, week out. Um, and then ask them if they know about your service. The reality is they'll say no, right? So uh, no, I don't really. And then it gives you an opportunity to just explain your service in a benefit-driven way. So instead of saying, oh, you got a training plan, food plan, daily, uh, weekly accountability check-in or whatever, it's, um, so what I'm going to start doing, as soon as we get off this phone, this phone call acts as a bit of a discovery call. I found out loads of information about you. Uh, I'm going to get to, I'm going to send you a fall and then we get to work on your training program and make sure that it suits everything you just told me. I'll probably need a bit more information. So, you know, I'll get back into it straight away and you know, ask you any questions that I need. And this is going to be completely bespoke and specific to where you're at. It's going to help you with these things that they've told you you want to help with. And we'll start working on your nutrition program and the benefit, so the benefits are this, 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 and this. Um, and then we check in with each other every single week. I'm available to you every single day so that, and then mention some benefits of that and why it's so amazing. Don't just list features. Um, get yeses throughout. So the easiest way to do that is, does that make sense? Yes. How does that sound? Amazing. Um, just keep getting yeses, keep getting them excited. Okay, cool. Um, amazing. Well, I'm really excited. Uh, like I said, we definitely help. Um, how does it sound? Yeah, sounds amazing. Okay, cool. Um, so if you want to get started, um, it's £150 a month. Um, there's a minimum of three month commitment. That doesn't mean you need to pay up front. Um, you can pay monthly, but it just gives you the opportunity to get the results that uh, I think we can get together. Um, would you like to pay via card or bank transfer? Whatever options you offer to, to take payment. It's as simple as that, right? Ask those three questions. Express your confidence in your ability to help. Ask them if they know about your services. Explain them in a benefit-driven way. Ask them how they'd like to pay. Really straightforward. So the entire process. What does it look like from inquiry to making a sale? So inquiry in, make sure you have a standard structure for responses. Like what's the goal? If somebody inquire, inquires or sends you a message on uh, social media or via email, like what's your goal? Right? That's what you always need to have in mind. So have a structure for responses. I've just given you one today. You may tweak it. You may not like it. That's fine. But just, you should have a process, right? You should have a sales process. If this inquiry comes in, they get this response. Yes, you tweak it. Um, but always have the goal in mind that you want to achieve, right? Complete form and book call, right? So for example, on our site, we have a Wufu form. People fill in the form, they click submit, it takes them through to a page where they can book a call at a time that suits them. A reminder sequence. This is really important to make sure that people actually show up to the call. So what you'll find in a sales process is there are, there are leaks everywhere. And you just need to constantly plug those leaks, right? Plug those gaps so that people don't fall out of the process. So a lot of people may fall out of the process once you start generating a lot of leads between booking calls and actually showing up for calls, right? So a reminder sequence is amazing. Uh, you could do a text <clears throat> with a video straight afterwards. So if somebody books a call, a text with a quick video message like the one I mentioned earlier, hey, really excited. If you need to rearrange, please do let me know. I'm a busy small business owner. I'm on my own. Uh, so every minute counts during the day. Uh, if you need to reschedule, that's fine. Let me know. But please, please, please don't just don't turn up. Um, if there's anybody else that needs to 
being on the call with you, please make sure that they're on the call with you. Uh, I'm more than happy to have husbands, wives, whoever uh, on the call to hear about uh, what you want help with and how I would help. Um, if you have any other questions, please do just let me know. Otherwise, I can't wait to chat with you whenever it is. And then a reminder on the morning of the, the call, hey, just a quick check-in to, to remind you that we're chatting today at 3 p.m. And then 10 minutes before the call, hey, can't wait to speak, give you a call in 10 minutes. Simple as that, right? <clears throat> and then the call itself, if they don't buy, have a process for that too. Uh, it could be a, after the call, they don't buy, you feel a bit deflated, that's fine, but you should have a, a, a standard procedure. Okay, cool, bit gutted, let's send them the personal message follow-up, right? And then follow up with them regularly. Spur stands for small, uh, short, personal, expecting a response. So in two weeks' time, hey, Sarah, just wanted to check in, see how you get on with your training. How's, how's the diet going? Right? Simple as that. If they don't answer, have a process for that too. How many times are you going to uh, attempt the phone call? Right? If they don't answer, you're just going to not call them again. Um, have a process for that, five to seven times. For example, call them three times. If they don't answer, fine, but do the same the next day and the next day at the same time. Text them, email, if, email them to see if they want to reschedule. Just make sure that you have an actual sales process in place. To be honest, for most of you, just getting those first four steps in place, inquiry, they come into you, the, what's the goal, make sure there's a process in place for the form and the call booking. So we use Wufu and the call booking software we call, use is Schedule Once. Another call booking software that may be a bit cheaper for you is Calendly and there are loads of form software is available. We use Wufu, you can use Typeform, Google Forms, SurveyMonkey, loads of different ones. Reminder sequence is really important and the call, do that sales process that I just walked you through. Easy. So notes. The most important part of your sales process is making sure there is actually a process or system in place. Like what happens? What's your plan? Selling is alien and scary for most trainers and coaches. That's okay. Um, but trust in what I've just walked you through, give me your blind faith and just do it. Just do what I've just said and it will work. You will make more sales in a better way. Feel better about it and the people that you sell to will feel better about it and there'll be better clients. Win, 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 win. That was like eight wins. We're all winners. You never need to be pushy or aggressive. You should feel great about the way you market and sell and the fact that you selling helps the new client by giving them the best chance of success. You can have 10,000 followers on Instagram and post unbelievable content, the reality is one or two will actually use it, right? People won't action your free content. But if you sell to them and actually work with them as a client, it goes from, you know, 0.02% of them having success to 0.02% of the people that work with you not having success, right? So that's better for them. And it's better for you because it's how you grow your business. All of you can begin working on this right now. The reality is most of you won't. I say that at the end of all of my talks, trainings, because it's my way of guilt tripping you and shaming you into doing the work. So everything that I've just given you, walked you through, just go and do it. Um, you'll, like I said, you'll make more sales, you'll help more people, you'll grow your business, you'll feel better about how you do your, conduct your sales process. So just do it. Don't just treat this as another bit of free content that you never use. All right, that's my way of guilt tripping you into you into actually doing the work. And that, my friends, is my in in entire training for the day. Um, if you would like to chat to one of my team, Leah is right over there, she's in the office today, um, about us helping you get the same kind of results as I showed you at the beginning of this training, that Danny was getting you know, six consultations, six sales calls, or that Jack was getting. Jack sent me that message on the 2nd of January. He signed up 10 new clients in the first two days of January. If you'd like help doing the same, I'm going to put a link in the comments right now if I can figure out technology. Let me see if I can do it. I'm amazing myself. So I've just put a link in the comments. Click that link, fill in the form. You'll be taken through a similar process to what I just walked you through, except we don't sell to you on the first call, um, ever. So fill in that form, have a chat with Leah. See, she will see it first if we can actually help you. If we can, you'll get off the phone call having not been sold to at all, uh, but she, 
she will uh, book you in for a second call and that's where she can walk you through our course and exactly what we do. So if you want to chat with Leah, fill in the form. I've just put the link in the comments below. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you for tuning in. If this was a value to you, please do give us a like, a share and a comment or one of the above. The more engagement these videos get, the more people that see the next one. It helps me um, and it encourages me to share more value with you. So it helps you too. Um, like I said, click the link in the comments below if you'd like a chat with Leah um, and she'll give you a quick call to see if we can help you. And if we can, then she'll book you in for a second call where you'll be walked through how we would help you get 10 sales in your first two days of January, like Jack did, or start um, converting six out of six consultations like Danny did that I showed you at the beginning of this call. And now I'm going to leave. I think Leah's diary is pretty busy this week, so please get booked in as soon as you can. Um, like I said, if you've got any questions, please do let me know. Thank you for tuning in. This is the longest Facebook Live I've ever done. Have a great day.